Hey folks, Chris here with the Crab Apple Cottage. Today I'm going to talk about doing long-term food storage and packaging your dry materials into mylar bags and buckets. I will show you the materials that I use, the process that I use, and explain to you why I do it the way I do it. So stick with me. First, let's talk about what the final product looks like. For me, I prefer to put my uh, mylar bagged dry goods into five gallon buckets. I prefer white buckets, and I'll talk about those more here in a minute. And this is what the final product looks like. Um, I usually put about 25 pounds in each bucket. It's um, A, easy for me to handle and deal with, like carry 25 pound bucket, and B, I know that if I stack four buckets on top of each other, that's 100 pounds. It makes it a lot easier to keep track and do inventory. So let's show you what I got inside. This happens to be 25 pounds of lentils, and here's what it looks like. This is uh, 25 pounds in five pound bags. Uh, the reason I use the five pound bags is because um, I find them, for a family of two, that it's a lot more manageable as far as actually opening up the product and using it. Um, and I'll show you the product that I use for that. So that's what the final product looks like. Let me show you the parts that I use. So first off, I prefer these Wallaby Mylar bags. I prefer the one gallon bags. This is a pack of 75 one gallon storage bags. What I like about these um, is that they come with the oxygen absorbers. So I don't have to guess how many oxygen absorbers, I just buy the whole pack. So this has 75 bags in it and it has um, 80, I believe, oxygen absorbers. It also has these labels. I don't use the labels, but it does come with 80 oxygen absorbers. Let me show you what those packs look like. Here we go. So inside your Walby package, you've got this uh, plastic bag with the one gallon Mylar bags in them. Here they are. These are not gusseted, means they do not stand on their own. Open at the top. Um, sometimes when I'm filling them, actually, I will almost always put them in a bucket as I'm filling them. So if anything spills, it's easy to clean up, pour back into the bag, that sort of thing. Here are the oxygen absorbers. They come in packs of 10. I don't open them until I'm ready to use all of them. It has a little indicator in there that shows you uh, when the indicator turns black, it means that the, my, that the the oxygen absorbers are no longer any good. So when I am um, doing Mylar, I do 10 bags at a time. So that's two buckets worth, five, five pound bags in each bucket, 10 bags total. And that's simply because the oxygen absorbers come in 10 packs. So I try to do um, 10 packs at once. These are the buckets that I use. These come from uh, Walmart, and they're like $4.98 each, I think. They're nice because they are uh, food-grade buckets. They're white. They don't have any markings on them that says like Home Depot or anything like that. Uh, they do have these labels on them, and I don't like the look of the labels, so I uh, use a hair dryer to warm up the labels and peel the labels off. Now, the lids do come separately. They're just snap-on lids. They're nothing fancy, and they're relatively inexpensive. They're under $2 a piece, so you get your bucket and your lid for under $7. So um, this also comes with a big label on it, and I've already taken this one off. I use a hair dryer again to remove the labels. I just like the look of it. That's what it looks like when you buy it. This is what it looks like when the labels are off, and that's just the look that I prefer. <clears throat> now, for labeling my buckets, I use a label maker. I use this Epson label maker. I just like the look of it better. <laughs> I put the label, um, what it is, and how many pounds on both sides. So I have it on this side, and I have it on the reverse, and then I also put it on the lid. That just helps me... Um, keep track of what it is and kind of no matter where it's positioned in my basement it's easy to see what's in there. So in addition to my buckets and my mylar, some other things that I use, um, like I mentioned the label maker and magic marker for writing on my bags. You can see here my bags I just use, I just put what it is, how many pounds, and then the month and year um, that it was packaged. And then of course you need some sort of method of closing the bags. I use this Conair hair straightener. I've had it for years. I think I either got it at Walmart or maybe even at a thrift store. I don't use a hair straightener very often for myself, but um, it comes in really handy for sealing up the Mylar bags, and I will show you that process here in a moment. And then the last thing that I use, and I forgot to put it in my pile of stuff here, is a scale. Now, this is a digital scale. I use this a lot for, um, all, well, I use it for all kinds of things, measuring produce from the garden, that sort of thing. But you don't have to use a scale if you are um, using bags of 
of materials that are five pounds or less. So like if you have a five pound bag of rice, you can just pour that into the mylar without having to measure it. However, if you buy in bulk, then you will need a scale to measure out what five pounds looks like. Now, of course, you don't have to be that precise if you don't like to. I prefer to have it measured out and pretty even. The bags do weigh 0.8 ounces each, so when I'm filling it, I make sure I go to five pounds, 0.8 ounces. So, okay, there we go. So we got our supplies, um, and let me show you the materials that I put that in there and what they look like. Okay, here I have a variety of dry goods that I've already put into Mylar. For the majority of things, five pounds fits pretty nicely into a one gallon bag. You can see here, those are kidney beans, um, white rice, and you can see the oxygen absorber really sucked the, um, the air out of this one. Um, these are wheat berries, and then I also have sugar over here and salt. Now, a couple of um, variations here. When you're doing sugar and salt, you don't want to put an oxygen absorber in it. It will turn it into a solid brick. So you can see there's a little more air in the sugar. The sugar does not have an oxygen absorber, but the five pounds fits very nicely into the bag. With the salt, um, there's room in this bag to add more salt, and I debated whether or not to put more pounds of salt in here, but I decided in the end to keep it to five pounds because it's just consistent. That means 25 pounds fit in a bucket. It's the same weight as the other buckets and easy to keep track of and count, like I had said before. So no oxygen absorber in the salt, no oxygen absorber in the sugar. Um, the beans, the rice, and wheat berries, as well as the lentils, all five pounds in one bag with one oxygen absorber. So I actually had reached out to Wallaby asking them if the oxygen absorber that came with the one gallon bags was enough, if one O2 absorber was enough for one bag. And they said that yes, it was sufficient. Now, if you were using something with a lot of air in it, like maybe rotini pasta or something like that, um, you might want to use two oxygen absorbers, but I haven't put any pasta like that in bags yet. The other thing is, if you do rotini, you're probably not gonna be able to fit five pounds in one bag. So the other thing over here is oats. Um, I was kind of bummed that five pounds of oats does not fit in one of these one gallon bags. I could barely get three pounds in, which means that I can only fit 15 pounds of oats in one bucket. Annoys me a little bit because it's not a nice 25 pounds like all the rest of my buckets, but here we are. So oats is the one thing for me that does not fit nicely um, five pounds in one bag. And like I said, if you were to do something like rotini or penne pasta with a lot of air in it, you probably would have the same problem. I do do spaghetti in these bags and you can get five pounds of spaghetti in the bags. I will show you how I do that here in just a minute. So I'll show you here how I put these in the bucket. Um, I put one bag, I put three bags in the bottom around the perimeter of the bucket. You can see one, two, three around the perimeter. And then I put one bag on top of the pile and then a second bag on top of the pile. And you may have to manipulate the bags a little bit, flatten them or make them fit. But for the most part, that's how almost all of my bulk goods fit into the buckets. Lid goes on, I stack them in stacks of four. So I have 100 pounds of a particular material in one stack. Okay, we're ready to put the materials in mylar. I'm gonna do spaghetti today. Um, I do have some spaghetti already stored, but I need to add some more. I have found that you can just barely fit five pounds of spaghetti in one of these one gallon mylar bags. So the first thing you need to do is you need to gather your materials. Gather your bucket and your lid, get your mylar bags. I go ahead and use a Sharpie marker and mark on there what it is, how much it is, and when I bagged it. Go ahead and do that for all of your bags. Get your oxygen absorbers. Again, this is a 10 pack. And then make sure you have enough of the material that you're going to do so that you have 50 pounds. Here I've got um, spaghetti that has four one pound packages in it. And then I have these two pound packages of spaghetti. So this stack, two of those four pound boxes and a two pound box equals 10 pounds. So you can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I've got all of my pasta set out just to make sure that I have what I need. The last thing you need to do is get your straight iron heating. I put mine on a plate just so it won't burn my table. I plug it into an extension cord and I have that warming up while I am packaging the materials. I've got all my spaghetti out of the boxes. These are all the one pound packages that were in the four pack. 
Here is the, um, here are the two pound packages of spaghetti. I've got those open ready to go. I just like to have as much of this stuff out and ready to go as possible. Um, sometimes I'll go ahead and like open the tops of them depending on what it is. And let me show you something else I really like about the Wallaby kit. So here, like I told you, here are the oxygen absorbers. They are 400 cc's each, 10 each package, as well as the little button that tells you when they have gone bad. Um, it comes with these labels, which I mentioned, but they're basically mailing labels. You could use those. Um, I just prefer to use a Sharpie marker. But what's really nice is that the Wallaby kits come with this nice instruction card. Um, here you can see six steps for actually filling your Mylar bags. And what's really nice is you can see here that they have a list of materials that are good for storing in Mylar and how long they last. Things that will last 20 to 30 years include instant coffee, tea, freeze-dried fruits and vegetables, not dehydrated, freeze-dried, dried kidney beans, dried lentils, pasta, rolled oats, and white rice. And things that last indefinitely include baking soda, salt, baking powder, and sugar. So these are the recommendations from Wallaby. And like I said, I did reach out to them and ask them if one of these 400cc uh, oxygen absorbers was enough for a one pound bag, and they said that it was. So that's what I really like about the Wallaby kits. It's all included in their instructions, the materials you need, it's great. Um, let's talk a little bit more about these materials. It did say pasta, so that I should know that that is specifically white pasta. You don't wanna use whole grain pasta, whole wheat pasta. That has a shorter shelf life. I don't know the whole science behind it, but generally whole grains have a shorter shelf life. I think because there's the bran is involved and there's more oils that can go rancid, that sort of thing. So I'm using plain white spaghetti. Same thing with flour. You wanna use, um, you wanna use white flour. You um, don't wanna use whole grain flour. And also with rice, you don't want to use brown rice, you want to use a white rice, you can use plain long grain white rice, you can use jasmine rice, basmati rice, whatever type of rice that you prefer. Um, so there you go, that's what I'm going to be bagging up. So let's get started. I've got five pounds of spaghetti pulled aside, two two pound boxes and one one pound package. I put my bag into the bucket. I just like that, like I said, in case I'm pouring something in and it spills, it catches it. Don't really need it for spaghetti, but it's just kind of nice. It also sort of holds the bag up. If you are doing something in a larger container, like maybe you bought a 25 pound bag of rice or 20 pound bag of rice, you can use a cup to pour it in. You can pour it straight in from the bag. It's just a lot more complicated. If you're a beginner, just start with small packages of whatever you're doing, like five pound bags of rice where you can just dump the whole thing in or five one pound bags of rice, whatever. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my spaghetti, just pour it straight in. Okay, there's my spaghetti, you can see it's kind of uneven on the top and then I just kind of do that, push it down and there you go. Five pounds of spaghetti in one bag and that's about the max that this can handle. You want to make sure you have enough room at the top to seal it. This just has enough room. I definitely wouldn't want anything any taller than the spaghetti and the spaghetti by the way does not fit. Uh, if you were to lay it on its side it would not fit in the bag so this is how it has to go. So first bag is done. I just set it out of the way and I'm going to go ahead and do all uh, 10 bags, and then I'll show you how I seal them up and put the oxygen absorbers in there. All right, that's done. So as you can see here, I've got my pile of spaghetti. Each bag has five pounds in it, and I'm ready for the oxygen absorbers. Do all your bagging at once, because like I said, once these are opened, um, they have a short life. I don't know the exact amount of time, but you want to get these into your bags and get them sealed up as fast as possible. So if you're short of time, you can go ahead and do this step and then come back later and do the oxygen absorbers, but make sure you're doing them all at once. Some people will put the um, O2 absorbers in a mason jar to keep them good. I just prefer to do it all at once. I just wait till I have 50 pounds of something. And also, if you can't afford 50 pounds of spaghetti at once, which I can't either. Just get it as you can. Get a couple boxes each week, stack it up, and then when you have 50 pounds, go ahead and do your vacuum sealing, or your, sorry, your um, mylar sealing. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is open these up. You have two options. You can go ahead and stick one in each bag, 
and then seal them up or you can keep them off to the side and um, put them in the bags as you need it. For everything else, I put them in, I'll like for with beans, I'll stick them in there as far as I can. But for spaghetti, because of the way it lays and stacks, I can only do one at a time. So, I will, you wanna try to get the top of your bag kind of smooth. So sometimes if you bend it over like that, you can get it kind of together. Spaghetti's a little different than doing other, um, other materials. Get your edges lined up. Hold that on there for a few seconds. I probably hold it on there longer than I need to. I just um, want to make sure it's sealed. Turn your bag. Now, careful, this is hot. Um, turn your bag. Line up your edge again. Seal. Okay, there you go. You still got the middle to do. And then for that, you're going to go up and down. At least with the tool that I have, I'm going to go up and down. Make sure it's good and sealed. There you go. And then sometimes I'll kind of try to just go along and make sure it's all sealed up tightly. There you go. Bag of spaghetti with an O2 absorber in there. Set that one aside. Keep working. I'm going to go ahead and do all these. Once again, you want to try to do these as fast as you can so that your oxygen absorbers um, don't go bad. Spaghetti is a little trickier to seal up than other things just because you it's so tall and you don't have much um, room at the top to put your, um, your sealer, your hair straightener, or whatever you're using. But it can be done. It, like I said, it just barely fits in it. Ouch, it's hot. Be careful. It is hot. <laughs> Here we go. I've got 25 pounds of spaghetti in five pound bags in each of these buckets. Now I showed you with some of the uh, materials like rice and beans, I do three on the bottom and then two on the top flat. But with spaghetti, you can't do that. So you just fit them all, um, all five of them vertically in there. They do just barely fit in there. I also wanted to show you this. So I had sealed up this bag. It was the last one actually. And I think I was just excited to be done. And I forgot to put the oxygen absorber in it. So I cut a little hole in the top, put the O2 absorber in it and then sealed it up. Um, in retrospect, I probably should have done it in the corner. I don't know why I didn't do it in the corner, um, but this is where I did it for some random reason. So anyways, you know, mistakes happen. Go ahead and fix it. Or, you know, I think I have some rice that accidentally didn't get an oxygen absorber in it. Like one or two bags, like I wasn't paying attention. It was some of the first that I did. So things happen. Either start over and use that rice up first, or just mark on the bag, no O2 absorber, and... Um, like I said, use that one up first. So there you go. Put the lid on this. 50 pounds of spaghetti um, with a shelf life of 20 to 30 years. This spaghetti will last me into old age. It will feed my child if necessary. It might even feed my grandchildren. So you don't need to move into mylar and long-term storage until you have a three-month supply of canned goods first. So do not focus on your long-term storage if you're just beginning. Start with getting a rotating pantry of things that you eat regularly, where you're first in, first out, marking the dates on the cans. Do that first. But once you've accomplished that, don't be afraid to jump into Mylar bags and long-term food storage. It really is pretty simple. I will put a link below to some of the materials that I used, like the buckets and the wallaby bags. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, but there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later.